Yep. So I'll try to present quite quickly the uh, REST high level REST SDK. So I've been starting to to tweak around that for like two weeks now. Um, first thing first, I have to say we are a bit late in terms of the iteration week. It was supposed to happen this week, actually, but I had some discussions to have with some of the VM team and then like some commit to do on my side, etc. So you know, the code wasn't published yet, but it should be quite soon because things are working now for the first milestone, which is nice. So that's quite cool. So just to say quite quickly, so the main idea was to build the high level REST SDK. Like the design I had in mind was that to me, a developer building a REST actor should only have to have the FVM RS, uh, RS SDK as a dependency and not having any other FVM crate. I mean, that's what I wanted to achieve. And I think that would be the best for uh, TX overall. So the idea is that we have this crate, which is the SDK crate, which will be publicly published uh, either today or tomorrow and accessible to any developers. So in that crate, we can find the main crate, main crate, sorry, which is the SDK, which will contain a lot of different uh, export, re-export from different kind of, uh, sorry, different uh, crate that we can find. So that we can find right here and also having some uh, custom code for uh, block store management, state management, etc. And so the first milestone was focused on uh, the state uh, procedural macro, which was designed to actually uh, generate code uh, inside of an actor to be able to save and load state without having to code it yourself. And so that has been achieved. Now, uh, sorry, maybe I can go to the uh, actor per se at first. Um, so now I have a state here, which is tagged with the FVM state macro, uh, which I import from my crates. And now if I, uh, you can see that I only have the invoke uh, function here, which is using some load and save, which I have not, not developed. But if I look at the expand uh, cargo expand results from my uh, crate, I can see that here we have generated a code that will actually take care of error management and also uh, different interaction with the FVM state. As of now, the only, uh, sorry, the only codec that has been implemented is the Cibor codec uh, as it was defined during the uh, grant proposal. Um, but yeah, it's here. And so the idea is that I tried to design it so that we can quite easily in some matches add some new codec uh, thanks to some attributes that we have uh, quite easily so that it is maintainable, tested, and we can then iterate for the more further in the future if you want to add new codecs or new attributes, et cetera. Um, and so, yeah, and so I did a basic testing, like integrated tests, uh, because uh, so I kind of tweaked it to local because we currently don't have an integration test like framework to be able to, uh, to sorry, to import inside the SDK. But so what it does is I take my basic actor, which we looked at here. Uh, so quite simply, uh, it only like initialize the state to a value that we want, and then we can like add some value. So it's quite a basic one, but it does a job at least for a demo. Um, and so the main idea is that in our test, we are like uh, initializing our state at 100 for the count and then only adding one to it. Sorry, I just need to plug it in there. So we are adding one to our state. And so if the save and load uh, functions are working, we should here find uh, the current value of the state being 101 uh, if it works. And so if I run my test, sorry, it should be working. Um, I hope you will bear with my computer, which is kind of slow. So <laughs> uh, I hope it won't be too slow though, but yeah, it should compile test and the test should pass. So yeah, that was it on our side, as I said previously. So M1, that was the goal that we had for developments. Uh, currently, uh, we are a bit behind schedule in terms of iteration with the FVM EBP, uh, the FVM EBP and the FVM team. So. Uh, please bear with us, it should be publicly available soon. And so we will be able to engage in, into iteration for this M1 during the following week, uh, if that's all right with everyone. And so I don't know if there are minutes supposed to be published over this call, but if that's the case, it'd be great if uh, we could uh, put that information in there. So that's it on my side. Any question maybe while the tests are compiling? <laughs> 
That's well, awesome. Uh, th th yeah, thanks a lot for that. Uh, super, super exciting to see this happen. Uh, the question here would be, how can people get, so I know that you said uh, that you will publish the crate later this week. So uh, just having some instructions and kind of like having some cues for the for the community, maybe like, you know, the, the team that's that's working protocol dev who's working on, we just said that, that we're prototyping a token after maybe they can switch over to this, um, uh, to this SDK. Uh, or they can start experimenting with these with this SDK. I think the, the key here is that we want early feedback, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So the idea is that um, as we had a discussion role on, on Tuesday, I think it was, uh, I mean, there are quite a, some problems around uh, being dependent on the RFFVM repo as we have some PRs that need to be merged, et cetera. And, and so as of now, the way that the SDK works is that um, for the crate, we are actually uh, using some some modules inside the crate to actually reference some of the crates that uh, we want to use because uh, otherwise uh, we will have to need to wait for some PRs to be merged before it works. So the main idea is that to experiment with that, um, you would have to clone. Uh, so I will put instructions inside of the documentation that for sure inside of the readme. Um, and I will also publish all the, the needed links on the FVM public channel on Slack. But the main idea around that is that uh, to actually like try to experiment with it, uh, you would need to create a new test inside of your submodule here, FFVM, inside of the, Git, of the testing integration framework crates like a simple, uh, sorry, uh, uh, as we can already find. And in there, code your actors and then have a test to actually take the one of them and like make it from inside of the integration test framework. Otherwise, if you're using the Lotus uh, branch that actually supports uh, programmable uh, actors, you can only uh, create your actors crate inside of the test uh, folder here inside of the SDK crates and then compile it to WASM. You can then find the WASM here inside target debug w build and have your wasm here and then you can use that and deploy it over on the chain that's uh that's the two ways of testing that i have in mind right now i know it's kind of bothersome the first one mostly but i don't have any yeah. other way of doing so so i think i think um if you can keep a set of instructions updated in the repo on which will evolve right so as you publish the crate as we fix out the integration tests as we like do a bunch of things that those instructions will become smaller and smaller up until the point where it's just, you know, import this great full stop. Yeah, exactly. uh, so, so if you can keep that as a, updated as a living thing, then I think that will make, you know, uh, people who are daring and are willing to experiment with, uh, with, uh, you know, the early, early builds, uh, will be like having the instructions right there and then, um, including like Alex, for example, Alex, who I think like Alex, I wanted to pull you into this conversation if you're still around to see if you would be willing to take it, take it out for a spin. I know it's probably a little bit of a detour uh, for you as you're building the, the token after, but I think it would, it would provide very valuable feedback. No, I think no, it looks really cool. It's definitely something we'd want to be using um, rather than digging like, yeah, like Thomas mentioned, sort of importing all the different low level FVM crates at the moment. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So I think like most pe people in this call are exactly the people who are uh, under who are willing to undergo the pain of you know like having to fiddle with things to to get a, an early build of something. So let's assume that you know everybody in this call is like willing to test it. Uh, so if you can have those instructions, that'd be awesome. Yeah, that's for sure. I'll, I'll add a proper like example plus some instructions inside of the readme or maybe like a dedicated docs folder um, and like give a, a way to the two way of testing that I just talked about, so, like write them inside of, the, of it. And as you said, I, 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 um, like the more we will go forward, the more it will be simple to like a point in the end where you only have, have to like import it as a depth. But um, yeah, for sure, I'll, I'll do so. Yeah, you're right. Awesome. That's great.